Hello fellow engineers! You might wonder why I am in the middle of a storm. And look, my rover doesn't have power anymore. So you might wonder what happened. Well, let me show you in this episode what led me to this problem and how I solved it. So the first misadventure was that while I was taking cool takes with the camera, I forgot my rover turned on. And that led it to exhaust its batteries. So I have to find a way to recharge the batteries or find a way to bring the mining drone back to the rover. So I opted for uh, building a second battery. The biggest problem was the weight and the volume of the power cells. So the first thing I thought I would do was to bring my welding ship with some materials and uh, try to rescue the mine drone or at least to build a second battery on it. But it didn't work. Uh, so you might wonder what the reason is um, for not being successful the repairing with this welding ship and it's pretty simple. The welding ship is bigger than the mining drone so it doesn't fit. I tried thinking it might work, it might fit in, but I failed. It didn't fit, I almost lost this ship so I just decided to bring this ship back and uh, just do it manually. And uh, just because it looks cool, I decided to park the welding ship for a while on top of the rover. Like so. But then I moved back to the base. Also I noticed that this ship is very slow to accelerate. I know it's not made for long trips, but I do not like it. Plus, since I'm using it more often, I should put a sensor on the entrance. Mm, next time. So I have to do like uh, three trips back and forth to get the materials, but finally the mining drone is operational. It just blinded because I put the battery in front of the camera. Anyways, I managed to bring it back to the rover and then I had to recharge it. Problem solved, I thought. But that's not what it happened. Because, and that's in the first place, the reason why the rover got stuck and without batteries is because whenever I lock the mining drone on top of uh, the rover, the script automatically triggers timer block that puts the battery on recharge. And as you may know, uh, it absorbs a lot of energy. And that's why I turned on the hydrogen engines and the O2H2 generators to recharge batteries of both. But I couldn't read the fancy LCDs because it was a long time ago when I set it up and I forgot how to read them. So I had a problem. And the problem, as you might think, is not uh, the storm. It's actually something else. Yeah, actually I like the storm because I made this rover just to be comfortable in any weather. So I just entered the rover and I was like, okay, let's wait for this to pass by. Since I have to recharge the batteries. And yes, let's fix these um, hinges because they were acting weird. I don't know why. All right fix it. Now I was trying to read the fancy LCD that I have here but I didn't realize that red uh, indicator was telling me the battery of the rover was about to be exhausted. And of course this is the result. The rover has no power and it's not recharging of course the mining drone. So I thought oh I'm stuck what do I do? I thought maybe I can do the same I did for the mining drone, but man, three trips just for one replacement battery. Is there any alternative? And with this storm I prefer to stay inside even if it's now cold because there is no air conditioning. 
But finally, I remembered the drone is in recharge mode. And yeah, Noto mode is giving power back to any device. So I have to remember for the next time. Every battery should be in Noto mode. So this way, any battery is receiving the same amount of energy. And the drone will not drain all the energy from the rover. Alright, so I just need to refill with some ice the rover and then we can continue extracting gold. So initially the idea was to wait for the batteries to recharge. So I spent some time um, rearranging the displays as you can see. And this way I should be able to remember everything. There's just one thing, as you can see it will take 8 hours to recharge everything. So I better not. So what I will do instead is just to use the remaining rover's power to extract a little bit more of gold and then go back to the base. So it's telling me that the drone have uh, enough power for a few minutes of mining. So let's do it, let's extract as much as we can. I managed to make a couple of runs, so this is the last one after the drone is parked on top of the rover we are ready to go and since i was there i also loaded a little bit of ice so it will still charge the rover while we are driving back to the base so ready to roll let's go back to the base In theory, also the solar panel should recharge the rover, but as you can see, it's so foggy that it's probably doing nothing. Ah, it feels so adventurous. Even though the mine is just 10 kilometers away, it's like 3 minutes driving. Another good thing is that wheels are not exploding. Before I experienced this problem quite often, like two wheels lost per trip at least. Alright, almost there. Let's try again or let's see again how the entrance work. As I approach the base there is a sensor that opens the gate, as you can see. So almost without having to stop, I can enter the base. Then I drive at the end of this corridor. And another sensor activate the elevator or the loading platform. I forgot that there is another sensor that lowers it and oh, I got stuck. And it also damaged the... Um, Spotlights, but let's take care of them later on. We now just park the vehicle and see how much we got from this run. So let's walk towards the elevator and go to the control room to see how much gold we got. Oops, what am I doing? Come back. Alrighty. Let's go up. Clanks quite a lot. A little bit scary. Okay, um... What am I doing? Let's go see the LCD panel. Here we are. Our materials. How much we got? 72k of gold. Not bad. Not bad. We might need more, but still it's a good result, considering the problems I got. So as I mentioned in the previous episode, we are going to see why I built this base close to a trade station. I've loaded the um, welding ship with some components and I'm going to sell them to see how much I make out of it and see if I can buy enough platinum for the ship. 
It's so close that I can even take the dogs with me with a walk. The only problem is that a dog without a suit would die frozen in a few seconds. Now well, jokes apart, it's very close. It took a few seconds to get there and park the ship at a convenient connector. Okay, let's go inside, let's find um, a trade uh, machine, trade store. I forgot the name of that thing. Let's simply call it a store. Anyways, I sold um, a few components. Uh, iron plates, computers, motors, etc. But um, since they accept just a limited amount of it, I realized it was not enough because platinum, as you can, as you will see, it's very expensive. A hundred and forty thousand per unit. It's way too much. I need more than three thousand. So I might give up on this idea and just go to space to get them on asteroids. Okay, so before anything, let's fix this rover. I might need it later on. So let's use this on robotic arm and weld it pretty quick. All right, I think I'm done. So if I have to go to space, let's do it properly. I have uh, separated the three modules that compose the fire prime. This is called the Firestone because it's a utility ship that has uh, refineries, large containers and has quite some lift power. I may not be able to build all the ion thrusters but those are not strictly necessary and I might be able to afford them with uh, trading. And while I was outside the ores were refined, components built thanks to the um, Easy Inventory Manager. So let's do it. I've built these blocks to link to the base and be able to start. It will take a while, as you will see. Although it's not the smallest of the three ships, it should take uh, less than a third of the required materials because the majority of components go to the fire prime, the main ship. Another convenient thing is that not being a fighting ship, it doesn't require any heavy armor block, so it's much uh, less expensive. As I mentioned before, this is a utility ship. Its um, main purpose is to be able to store a large amount of ores. Uh, it has also a refinery, so I can also convert them into ingots, lowering the total um, weight of the things I will carry inside. So the idea behind the fire prime is to have um, each module, each uh, single ship, specialized in something. This one, the Firestone, is specialized in um, storing and refining ores. The other, the smaller, is the Firestorm, and it's a defense ship. It's small, it just uses hydrogen and it's agile. Yet, it doesn't have a lot of autonomy, so it's not independent from the main ship that is the Fire Prime. And then the Fire Prime itself is the biggest part and it's made to carry the other two smaller ships and it has also a hangar to hold uh, smaller vehicles like the rover. Okay, so mainly the ship is built as you have noticed some uh, blocks were missing because I was not able to do it properly and also because I don't have um, enough platinum. Anyways, it should work with just hydrogen, it should be able to go to space, or I should be able to buy a little bit more platinum from the train station. So now there is only one thing left that unfortunately um, is pretty relevant. There is no hydrogen inside the ship and I haven't built a proper connector as you can see here.
So this is it for this episode. Next time we will finish the ship and we will also test it. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe. Bye bye.